And you will maintain this safe place for yourself, for your art? You don't think you will ever change and write books that incorporate white, white lives into them substantially? I have done. Mm. In, In a substantial paradise. way. You can't understand how powerfully racist that question is, can you? Because you could never ask a white author, when are you going to write about black people? Whether he did or not, or she did or not. Mm. Even the inquiry comes from a position of being in the center. And being used to being in the center. And being used to being in the center. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tunji's Podcast. I'm your host, Tunji Taylor Lewis. Guys, uh, or guys and gals, guys and gals, everybody. Uh, <laughs> the clip that you just saw was a clip of uh, Toni Morrison. Um, a lot of you have probably already seen that clip. It's a clip that's gone viral on Instagram a few times. It comes from uh, world-renowned uh, and Nobel uh, Prize-winning author. Toni Morrison, uh, she just passed away not too long ago, and uh, she had a documentary that came out um, about her life and about her career. Um, I watched it yesterday with my aunt in uh, Rio Theater here in Vancouver. Uh, this woman is incredible, y'all. Like, I had no idea that she was this, I had no idea that she won a Nobel Prize. I had no idea about the type of stuff that she was writing, like she's a, uh, She's a she's a she's a fictional writer, and she writes these incredible she's, these incredible stories. And like you know, um, even seeing the synopsis of these stories um, in the documentary was just like, whoa, this is some really heavy stuff, and some heavy stuff that will cause you to think. Um, I guess the reason why I didn't know about her that much is because like I'm not a reader, like I'm not somebody who reads books and stuff like that. I'm mostly a, a podcast guy and a video guy. Um, but what I would like to do one day is like watch the movie that Oprah produced based on her book, Beloved. If there's an audiobook version of her books available, I think I'd like to listen to them and like try to pick up on the stuff that shit because my problem is when i read books i don't pick up on the subtleties and like the hidden messages that the, that the uh, writers try to put in there so but i think if i listened to it and watched it then i would definitely pick up on stuff um my big takeaway from watching her documentary though was the fact that tony morrison was very steadfast about her convictions she didn't feel obligated to um, like she said in that interview, like incorporate stories, oh, not incorporate, but like um, centralize her stories around white people. She had a very unique point of view. She felt like it would be um, good for her to make her stories um, centered around the lives of, the majority of her stories were about the lives of black women whether it was black women in slavery, black women for, uh, during segregation, like, um, and, and that was the thing that really set her apart. On top of the fact that she was clearly excellent at writing, her subject matter was so different from what everyone else was doing. And, uh, you know, she was told by a bunch of people that, you know, her types of stories would never work. Um, she wasn't getting the type of awards that we sh she was supposed to be getting at first because you know um, It just it just the, the subject matter wasn't about stuff that was you know conventionally accepted and um, It got me really thinking a lot how you know um, I have often been frustrated by the fact that you know in my life in my journey in my career how I have certain observations about you know, the industry that I'm in, how I feel like I can see as clear as day that, you know, things should be done this way. And then, but everybody else around me feels like it should be going this way. Uh, and the thing that I learned from Toni Morrison is just that her unique perspective was ultimately the thing that made her great. 
and was ultimately the thing that people talked about at her funeral. And that was a big lesson for me. Like I, I was even thinking about it, like you know, um, with with the story of Noah's Ark. Like yeah, I was just randomly watching, you know, Evan Almighty, which is actually a horrible movie. I thought it was a good movie when I watched it as a kid, but it's actually a really bad movie. Um, anyway, but even just the story of Noah, right? Like God had revealed to him that there's a flood coming, and you know, he and his family were the only people in town working on this flood. They knew that this flood was coming. Everybody else around them was making fun of them for making this ark. There's no, like, there is no rain coming. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? A flood that's going to flood this man? Get You need a boat this big because the flood is going to be that crazy. Get out of here. Um, you know, being completely honest, I probably would have been one of those people laughing at Noah. Uh, but with that being said, at the end of the day, um, it's not about how many people believed whether or not Noah was right or not. The, the, the point of the matter was Noah was the only one who believed what he believed and he had the right belief in what was about to happen. And, um, and, and it's, it's a similar thing with Tony and, it, and I feel like I can relate to um, just believing and having certain convictions about um, especially in my career that you know a lot of people don't have so like for example um you know i've talked a lot on here about how um you know actors are basically at the bottom of the totem pole in the entertainment industry like we just are like we're agents tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing the unions tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing Casting directors judge us based on our looks rather than our merit and our acting ability. Um, you know, uh, you know, pr producers don't pay us as much as we're um, as much as we we deserve. Um, you know, like there's just so many factors about the entertainment industry um, that, and and we're under we're basically under everybody else's control. We don't control everything, and we do especially. We, sorry, we don't control anything, and we especially don't control the trajectory of our career. If all we're doing is acting and waiting on auditions and going out for auditions, and that's all we're doing, we don't control our destiny, which is insane. Because if it's your life and it's something that you're passionate about, you should want to have at least some control. <laughs> over what you're doing um and that's basically the journey that i'm on right now like the only reason i i, I uh, backed away from my agent is because i quickly realized that even though when i was first introduced to my agent that it was posed to me as a collaboration and uh, equal partnership it really wasn't you know whenever i if i ever said no to an audition you know that would be a big no-no and that's not a partnership that's uh you know that's uh you know, supervisor employee relationship, right? Um, so yeah, so that's why I'm on the journey that I'm on right now. I, I went away from my agent and I basically said to myself like, look, until I get approached with a situation where it is truly a 50-50 partnership and we both have as much to gain and as much to lose with each other because I have a platform um, of my own and I can survive by myself and you know, the only reason I'm getting an agent is because it'll help me even go further with what I'm already doing. I'm just gonna build my own platform, you know, build my own future business, you know, get on the production side, learn the production side, like learn like how all the other parts of like producing content and producing shows work. Um, I'm gonna learn all that stuff because acting is my gift, entertaining people is my gift. Every time I've uh, gone in a venue where I'm trying to entertain people or make or you know like or act or do comedy it's always worked so it's a gift that I have um, that's not going away so long as I work on it somehow um, I'm just gonna learn how to do everything myself to me that seems super obvious and you know I don't I personally don't understand how so many of us actors are so okay with being frustrated and feeling overwhelmed and being stressed out and having no money and all the stuff that comes with being just an actor and having your destiny controlled by everyone else except you i personally don't understand how 
so many of us just accept that as, as you know, the way that it goes. Um, and, you know, in watching Toni Morrison, in observing the story about Noah, and just like thinking about my own life, I'm realizing that, okay, like this is going to be the way that I'm going to help a bunch of people. This is one of the things that, you know, 30, 40 years from now, like I'm, my legacy is gonna be based on is that, you know, I, you know, took all my stuff and I decided what I wanted to do with it rather than giving all my stuff to everyone else and letting them decide. Because at the end of the day, those people don't care. These casting directors, these producers, these most people in the industry don't care about you and how your career trajectory is going. So I put it in their hands, put it in God's hands and, and, and keep it in your hands, you know? So, um, so that's the thing I learned from watching Toni Morrison. You know, my unique perspective isn't the thing that makes me weird or isn't the thing that makes me crazy. It's the thing that is gonna make me great one day. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for listening and watching once again, y'all. Peace out.